The unconscious body-mind comes into existence as experiences in relation with attachment well-being in those moments of experience create neural content and neural connectivity, abstract information connected in specific ways. The unconscious body-mind is understood through the conceptualizations of the neurobiological social engagement system, which I explore in thesis number four of my Implicit Revelations case study, so please be sure to check out those other content creations through my known documentary series for further insights about how to understand and heal unconscious body-minds. So the unconscious body-mind is comprised of hundreds of trillions of neural networks. That's um, kind of a lot. That's like, that's like a really big number that is pretty unfathomable. Like, if you try to conceptualize hundreds of trillions, you know, like, like if you imagine, imagine a hundred ladybugs. Imagine a hundred ladybugs. You're looking at this little garden area and you're like, oh my god, there's a hundred ladybugs! That's like a large number. There's like more ladybugs than I can fathom right here, okay? Now imagine there's a thousand ladybugs and then you're like looking at this garden and you're like, oh my god, there's a thousand ladybugs! It's like my brain can hardly fathom how many ladybugs I'm seeing right now. And then there's a million ladybugs and your brain is like exploding. You're like, oh my God, I'm surrounded by these mystical little teeny tiny creatures that like turn into ladybugs from larvae. This is mind blowing. There's a million ladybugs. But then there's a billion ladybugs, a billion ladybugs. And you're like jaws dropped and you're like, how is this possible? This is a bigger number than my mind can fathom. You're looking at a billion ladybugs. A million ladybugs. And then there's a billion ladybugs. And then there's a trillion ladybugs. But that's not all. There's hundreds of trillions. Okay, so that's like a really big number. If you imagine visualizing hundreds of trillions of anything, your brain would basically explode. <laughs> it's a number that our mind cannot fully grasp. And that just shows the miraculous complexities of the unconscious body-mind. The unconscious body-mind is so infinitely complex, but it absolutely has to be. Why? 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 Why would the unconscious body-mind have to be so infinitely complex? Because the unconscious body-mind is responsible for housing consciousness, the true essence of our cells. You can explore more about this in previous theses, statements, and analyses in my Implicit Revelations case study. I think it's a number 11 or 12. But consciousness exists and operates independently of all brain-body activity. Consciousness is the true essence of self. And the brain and the body is the vessel that consciousness is exploring the human experience through. Okay? And so the unconscious body-mind is so infinitely, miraculously complex because it has to be. Because consciousness is an infinite essence. And in order to contain infinity, the unconscious body-mind must have components of infinity, which is why it is so infinitely complex and infinitely miraculous. It has to be. Otherwise, consciousness wouldn't fit in here. <laughs> consciousness wouldn't fit in here if this stuff was simple and easy to understand and boringly not complex. So it has to be complex in order to effectively house the infinite essence of consciousness, the true essence of our cells. So the unconscious body-mind is comprised of hundreds of trillions of neural networks that can be understood through conceptualizations of the neurobiological social engagement system, where every year of life has added neural data in relation to 17 plus roles that each carry a distinct unconscious priority that affects automated navigation regarding who we are and how that uniquely individualized sense of self navigates its existence, navigates reality, interprets reality instinctively. And so... According to my personal dimensions theory that I've sculpted through my implicit revelations case study, visual eyesight gathers energetic information from the atmosphere and interprets it through different regions of the unconscious body-mind. Different regions. So the data that's being gathered over here and the data that's being gathered over here and the data being gathered here are not being processed and interpreted and translated into automated navigation through the same regions of neural wiring. 
Okay, and there are three specific variables regarding how the eyes gather information. There's the visual plane from left to right. There's the visual depth and distance from near to far. And there's the visual circumference that encircles the face with the additional variable of different bodily postures. If the neck is turned, for example, then the way that the visual data is being processed might actually be slightly different. But the main three variables are the visual plane, visual depth, and visual circumference, and all the different variables of these three components. So near to far, over to the left, near to far, over to the right, near to far, right in front of you, near to far, right above you, near to far, right below you, etc. And so if the neurobiological social engagement system of the unconscious body-mind has complete integrative connectivity, then it's no big deal that visual data is being processed through different regions of neural wiring because it's all connecting. And so there could be a piece of visual stimulus here and a piece of visual stimulus here, and they're being translated through different regions of neural wiring, but because it's all connected, they then exchange information, and these two pieces of reality know about each other, and the parts of consciousness experiencing the projections of the automated navigation interpreting these elements of reality are united and unified. So if the neurobiological, if, if, if the neurobiological social engagement system of the unconscious body mind has complete integrative connectivity, then the visual scene that is being perceived will be one unified picture without distorted projections from disintegrated neural wiring. But here's the thing any moment of unfulfilled attachment needs, any moment, any moment of unfulfilled attachment needs from any period of life can create disintegrated neural data or neural data with low vibrational content and or low vibrational connectivity, meaning it might disrupt navigation or not be able to pro effect effectively provide navigation if it doesn't have the most optimal content or if that content is not connected with other information, basically. Because the unconscious body-mind has been sculpted through experiences in relation with attachment well-being, creating neural content and connectivity, filed in accordance with every year of life adding neural data in relation with 17 plus roles of the neurobiological social engagement system that each carry a distinct style of priority regarding unconscious navigation. So any moment of life without attachment and fulfillment can create disintegrated neural data. And if it's occurring chronically or severely, if there's a lot of different moments, or if some of those moments were really intense moments of unfulfilled attachment needs, then there's going to be even more disintegrated neural data, data that doesn't have connections with each other. When we look in a mirror, we are not seeing ourselves as we naturally exist. We are not seeing ourselves as we are. We never look in a mirror and see ourselves as the absolute existence of who and what we are. We are looking in a mirror and seeing a projection of an interpretation of reality based on wiring of the unconscious body-mind. Now, as consciousness liberates it, there are fewer distortions, and so then the way that we perceive ourselves in the mirror might be closer to how we actually exist, but still, how we see ourselves in a mirror depends on the wiring of our unconscious body-mind. And so it can be changed, the wiring can be changed, and consciousness can reclaim its power and re-sculpt how the self is being interpreted when looking in a mirror. But still, even then, even when this is totally restored, the ability to have a perception of the self through the reflection of a mirror depends on the ability for the unconscious body-mind to interpret that element of stimulus. And so when we look in a mirror, we aren't seeing ourselves as we exist in the immediate moment. Instead, we are seeing a projected interpretation of our self-reflection through regions of wiring in the unconscious body-mind beyond awareness. How infinite is consciousness? Okay, so we explained 
the unconscious body mind is so miraculously complex because it has to be because consciousness is an infinite essence and the unconscious body mind wouldn't be able to house consciousness if it weren't so infinitely complex okay so consciousness is a pretty infinite essence right how infinite is consciousness <laughs> how infinite is consciousness how do you contain infinity how do you describe infinity every being on the planet has trillions of self aspects, trillions of parts of consciousness. So if you're ever like, oh, a part of me feels this way and a part of me feels that way, it's because you literally have trillions of self aspects experiencing different elements of reality through different regions of the unconscious body mind in every nanosecond beyond awareness. For every moment of experience that is conceived by the conscious mind, there are hundreds of subsational experiences, subconscious sensations unfolding for parts of consciousness beyond awareness. The conscious mind only has access to approximately 0.02%, 0.02% of inner realities in any given moment. Approximately 99.08% of inner realities exist and operate beyond all conscious knowledge. And you can explore more about these ideas in my Implicit Revelations case study. Ideas I've been sculpting over the past many years through my own miraculous healing investments and explorations. So consciousness is like, you know, infinite. How do you describe infinity? How do you contain infinity? How do you explore infinity? When we look in a mirror, we are not seeing ourselves as we exist. We are seeing an interpretation of ourselves according to the wiring of the unconscious body-mind. But in relation with my personal dimensions theory, visual eyesight in every inch, every inch, every single inch of visual space and distance in relation with the visual plane, visual depth and distance, and visual circumference, every inch, if not every centimeter, but definitely every inch of space repeatedly expressed and, and revealed through my implicit revelations case study over the past many years. Every inch, every different inch, 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 every little square inch, every inch of visual data, visual eyesight is being processed through different regions of the unconscious body mind, which means when we take a mirror and we explore ourselves through different components of reality, different depths of perception, different regions of conceptualizations of the self, we can directly perceive different aspects of our consciousness. And I've spent a very long <laughs> <laughs> a very long time sculpting a brand new way to use mirrors to understand and heal the unconscious body mind while liberating and expanding consciousness. It's a very specific process that uses mirrors in relation to my personal dimensions theory to explore the neurobiological social engagement system of the unconscious body-mind and recognize all the different regions of neural data creating interpretations of reality beyond awareness. And it especially explores self-associations, which references thesis number 30 through 0 of my Implicit Revelations case study. Self-associations as a role of the neurobiological social engagement system that carries the unconscious priority of helping the self recognize and resonate with its own existence and associating that uniquely individualized sense of self with all components of reality, including other people, places, things, and sensations. These techniques I've spent years developing have had such a profound impact. They were the core component in helping Kristen break down amnesic barriers between over 30 independent states of consciousness while living with adaptable consciousness condition. 
They were the core component in reconnecting a completely disconnected mind and body and completely disconnected brain hemispheres and helping dozens of age regressive states of consciousness complete the halted stages of neurodevelopment so that they could neurodevelopmentally, neurobiologically complete those halted stages and grow into all that they were intended to be. It was the core component and recovering memories from my entire life after multiple forms of amnesia caused me to be unable to remember any of my life's experiences, including my childhood. These techniques use mirrors in relation with the personal dimensions theory that I have created through the Implicit Revelations case study to explore how hundreds of trillions of neural networks are affecting automated styles of navigation and regulation beyond awareness. These techniques allow us to discover disintegrated neural pathways and from this information rewire them without looking at any of the neural data. We don't have to dive in and see when this neural wiring was created, what information is stored in this neural wiring, why it's not connected. We don't have to go into any of that. We don't have to look at any of the details of the, this neural wiring carrying unconscious memories that are affecting navigation now. Because neurobiologically speaking, memories don't exist to store information about the past. Memories only care about navigating present and potential moments. And so this neural data houses memories that are navigating our nows and our potential nows, the present and the future. They don't care about storing the past. And so these techniques allow us to discover disintegrated neural wiring or neural wiring that doesn't have total connections with everything because of past moments of unfulfilled attachment needs. But we don't have to look at when this neural wiring was created. We don't have to look at what information is stored in it. We don't have to look at what memories it houses. We don't have to look at why this neural data wasn't connected. We don't have to find out what attachment needs were not fulfilled back then. We don't have to look at any of that. We don't have to look at the details of neural wiring. We don't have to look at the details of past experiences. These techniques are so revolutionary. They allow us to reveal these neural pathways that don't have connections, that are unconsciously affecting navigation beyond awareness, affecting trillions of self-aspects beyond awareness, and totally rewire them. And the process of that is fun and easy and exhilarating and exciting and engaging and enjoyable in every possible way and every possible level. And among the infinite potentials, the process of healing the neural wiring, once it's discovered, it's a two-step process. There's the unveiling technique that allows us to discover what's happening in the unconscious body-mind, to understand what's happening, to identify regions of disintegrated neural wiring, to identify parts of consciousness who might be having different experiences from each other, to understand what's happening in the self-associations of the neurobiological social engagement system of the unconscious body-mind. And then... The second step, once this is done, once we understand it, once we've discovered this, then there's a practice sculpted to help heal and rewire this stuff and liberate consciousness. And the practice applies thesis number 29. When consciousness teaches the brain and the body to socially engage with itself, the process of nurturing internal attachments completely transforms the entire unconscious body-mind, expanding neural connectivity, improving neural content, and reconstructing regulatory protocols throughout all brain-body systems without directly working with any memory data, without directly working with any brain-body systems. And it's so powerful as explored in thesis number 29, so please be sure to check that out if these topics interest you. This is so powerful because attachments are how the unconscious body-mind was originally developed. The foundation of the entire unconscious body-mind is rooted in internal attachment systems, originally sculpted through social engagement with other people, but now through social self-engagement, healing internal attachments as consciousness fulfills needs for itself, the unconscious body-mind is reconstructed without working with any of the unconscious body-mind. You don't have to work with memories. You don't have to to play with regulatory protocols. All you got to do is have these fun, simple practices, and all of that stuff is done indirectly. So again, explore thesis number 29 of the Implicit Revelations case study for further information. 
So these techniques are so revolutionary, so radically transformative, so powerful, so expansive. In the process, consciousness has the opportunity to directly perceive trillions of its self-aspects. During the process of the subconscious unveiling technique, consciousness gains an opportunity to directly perceive trillions of its own self-aspects who are experiencing different regions of the unconscious body-mind, different regions of neural wiring beyond awareness. Because again, approximately 99.08% of inner realities exist and operate beyond all conscious knowledge. And in the process, we get to understand how the unconscious body-mind is carrying associations with itself and thus associating itself with reality. By transforming self-associations through the application of this practice, which again is fun and easy, as complex as these topics might sound, the practice itself is fun, simple, and easy. It's just the science behind the practice that is complex, but the practice itself is so fun and so easy and so simple and so doable, so easily integrated into everyday life. This process allows the unconscious body mind to gain new associations with its own self. And as the unconscious body mind gains new associations with its own self, it unconsciously transforms associations with components of reality. And so if there's any triggers in reality, for example, there might be a certain smell that happens and it triggers something and unfun things happen because of neural activity affecting regulatory protocols and projections of navigation beyond awareness. Without directly working with the triggers, without directly working with the memories being activated, without directly working with the sensory stimulus, that will start to be transformed indirectly because that's happening regarding how the unconscious body-mind is associating itself with reality, but by transforming how the self associates with itself, those components of navigation are indirectly transformed. You don't have to work with triggers. You don't have to work with past memories. You don't have to work with trauma responses to heal and transform them. The power of this is incredible. And if you want to find out more about the real potent potency of this, do explore thesis number 29. I explain among the infinite miracles, three specific miracles that unfolded through the application of these concepts and these ideas. The soul, by applying my updated personal dimensions theory, I shared an original personal dimensions theory, but there's an updated version of it now. By applying the updated version of my personal dimensions theory in relation with the application of mirrors, consciousness can directly perceive its infinite self aspects and gain an understanding about how the unconscious body mind is interpreting associations with itself and associations with reality. Consciousness gains the opportunity to understand what's happening beyond awareness and to recognize and identify regions of disintegrated neural wiring. And based on this assessment, based on this unveiling, subconscious unveiling technique, the second part of these techniques allows me to create a practice sculpted very specifically based on what was discovered here to transform those regions of the unconscious body mind. And again, you don't have to work with any memories. You don't have to figure out what the neural data is from or when it happened or what attachment needs weren't fulfilled or what experiences were going on or how old you were. This disintegrated neural data could be from 30 years ago, but you don't have to figure that de those details out. These techniques are so profoundly, wondrously, revolutionarily, expansively, marvelously, miraculously incredible that we can just identify regions of disintegrated neural wiring and reconstruct them without looking at their particulars. And this is so freeing. 
because it allows consciousness to expand its loving presence rather than abandon its host of loving presence where its power is and trying to go back into the past and trying to go back into all this neural data and trying to filter through all this information. It can just be here unifying, unifying, unifying within itself, unifying, unifying, expanding within itself. And this process is genuinely incredible and fun and enjoyable. I have spent thousands, multiple thousands of hours applying these ideas over the past three, four years. And every single day when I approach these practices, I have a renewed sense of enjoyment and appreciation for them. After hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, over a thousand days of these same practices, Hundreds and thousands and thousands and thousands of hours of these practices, and they are even more enjoyable now than ever. That's how wonderful they are. They're not boring, and they're not lame, and they're not painful. They're awesome and fun, and they feel good every single time. And the effects of them are undeniable. A week ago, I identified a region of neural wiring that was decreasing left brain hemispheric engagement and projecting an interpretation of reality so I could not recognize myself at all because this neural wiring was from a time that is not recent during times of unfulfilled attachment needs and it could not effectively translate my perception of self-reflection in the mirror. And just a few days, applying these practices a little bit of time every day for one week, that one week, one week, one week, just a few days, a little bit of play every day for a few days. That neural data is so transformed. I can completely recognize myself. The neural data has complete updated connections and my left brain hemisphere no longer glitches. I completely expanded the neural connectivity, completely improved the neural content and improved brain body regulation. So my brain hemispheres are more effectively connecting after just a little bit of play every day for one week. That's how powerful this stuff is. That's the potency of this stuff. That's the expansive potential of this stuff. Oh, it's so amazing. It's so incredible. When we see ourselves in a mirror, we are not seeing ourselves as we exist. We are seeing an interpretation of reality based on the wiring of the unconscious body-mind projecting automated navigation onto trillions of self-aspects or parts of consciousness. The personal dimensions, mere play with mere power, subconscious unveiling and transformation techniques allow me to help you understand and heal your unconscious body-mind to liberate and expand self-aspects. I offer these services through a variety of components. There's one-on-one -on -one consciousness consultations through one to two hour video calls where you have multiple mirrors at home and I walk you through this process. There's group consciousness consultation calls where multiple people, like a small group of friends who's curious about this together, joins together and schedules a one to two hour video conference, con consciousness consultation call with me. And again, every individual will have mirrors at their own house and I walk everyone through this process simultaneously. And then there's in-person opportunities. My favorite way of sharing this is through group speaking engagements. At larger events with anywhere from 50 to 100 people to thousands of people, because the more the merrier. And then there's a way to have this concept presented in a large group setting so many may benefit simultaneously. And during this process, I apply the concept on myself with a personal demonstration, and I apply this concept with volunteers from the audience who can come up and play with mirrors on the stage with me, and then everyone in the audience can learn about these concepts and application and apply them on their own healing journey time and explore them in their own way. To find out more about these offerings and ideas, please explore kristenwindsor.com slash contact.
And if this particular offering does not interest you, I have lots of other miraculous offerings I'd be honored to share. Whether it's one-on-one, -on -one, you would like a healing journey program or a personalized creation or connecting one-on-one, -on -one, or if you're looking for group speaking engagements about understanding and healing unconscious body minds to liberate and expand consciousness in a multitude of ways, I have so many different offerings, not just this one technique. I encourage you to explore all the many offerings. You can peek details in the video description below on all my different web pages and miraculous magical wonders. It would be an absolute blessed privilege and a divine honor to connect with you and share these gifts. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being you. Thank you for daring to boldly rise up into your personal power to cultivate loving liberation from the inside out. We are all in this healing journey together. And the best is yet to come, guaranteed. It's only going to get better and better and better as we continue to rise and rise and rise and rise and rise and rise and rise. And rise. To greater depths of personal power and greater depths of loving liberation. New heights await us. Thank you for being here and thank you for being you. Have a beautiful and blessed day and I look forward to connecting with you soon, whether through an offering through Kristen's Consciousness Consultancy or another of my free content creations. I'm grateful you're here and I'm grateful that you're sharing the journey with me. Namaste. The love and light in my divine consciousness sees and honors the love and light in your divine consciousness. Infinite blessings, beautiful beloved beings. And may you unconditionally embrace the infinite moments of happily ever after that inevitably await you. Thank you for being here. And thank you for being you.